home sharing is a global trend and on the Airbnb platform alone, more than 6 million homes are listed in 191 countries and 81,000 cities across the globe. When listing your property, first impressions count. So we asked professional interiors photographer Stefani van Eck to share with us her top 10 tips when it comes to taking pictures of your property. Because it's quite simple, good pictures will most likely lead to a booking, and a booking means money in your pocket. My name is Vikas Pretorius, I'm the editor of Days and Home magazine, and here is Stefani starting our conversation with the importance of good light. What is the first thing you need to consider when it comes to light? Know your own space. What I always do is I ask my potential clients or my clients, keep an eye on the rooms that you want me to photograph. When is the soft light in your room? And when I speak about soft light, you need to look at, look at the shadows. If the shadows have very harsh lines, that's a very harsh light that fl flows into your room. When you see the shadows are, have softer lines and it flows out, that's soft light. So look for that soft light. Walk around in your house throughout different times of the day. Different spaces will have different lights coming into the space at different times of the day. So know which space has got that soft light. Um, the harsh light gives a blowed, blown out view in an image, which is, which is ideally not what you want. You want to see something through the windows. If you do have a dark space, by all means, switch on your overhead lightning. Uh, switch on the, the, the bed light. Um, I do think pay attention to the tone of the bulb you have in your light. If it's a very yellow light, it can influence the, the overall tone in your room. Yeah, I think they call it warm white is the name of the, of the bulb. Correct, correct. Because it's not that stark, harsh, almost that LED light, which is not what you want because that creates a very sterile feeling. And then obviously, first rule of thumb is as far as possible, try not to take any pictures at night. Late at night, even on a, on a DSLR, you, you will get a lot of grain on your, on your final product, your final image, which means it looks almost like this little bit of flower, something coarse that's on your image. It, Try to avoid shooting too dark. I always say, you know, I mean, the best soft light that makes for the most beautiful pictures are early morning light and late afternoon light. I mean, those are the ones that give you that beautiful, romantic, soft tone. Now you have this amazing space. You're charging somebody a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks a night and you're taking pictures and it's cluttered and messy. Why should people declutter? As soon as you have your personal items standing around or your toiletries or too much amenities, it does distracts from what you're selling. For me, it's always put yourself in the shoes of your potential guests and you want to make it your home for when you stay there. So I say if you have a bedside table, make sure only the necessities are there. In your living room, take away family pictures or frames or if there's too many candles or too many decorative items pack away make it very clean cut such an important thing but if you are taking pictures and you are doing this yourself look through the viewfinder and see what is visible you know now you've done all the effort to maybe clean up the couch and you moved something yes. off maybe a scatter you dislike or last night's throw that you were sitting underneath because it's cold and now it's sort of bundled in the corner and you take the picture and you don't notice that and then you're stuck with a beautiful image but there's something in the corner that distracts. The thing I do cringe about the most is the toilet lids that are up and um, try not to take photos of toilets. We all know they're there. If there's toilet paper rolls or toilet rolls or there's toilet brushes or, or a toilet spray, try to move those things out of the image. Those, those are extras you don't need to shoot or show. Obviously, I mean, you've now said, I mean, declutter. But a big part of that is also what you call setting the scene. We probably call it styling in the magazine. Uh, what do you mean by setting the scene? First and foremost is not to place items or props in your home or, or guest house that's not going to be there for the use of the guest. So make sure that you create and you manage expectations. So if you do put your beautiful Nespresso machine down there, if I book, I want that Nespresso machine to be there. So. And by all means, show those beautiful amenities or, or facilities that you offer. And by, by styling, I mean, make sure if, you, if we look at a, at a bedroom situation, 
that you have your bed properly spread, that you've got scatter cushions or cushions set out, that you've got a nice throw. If you have bedside tables, that they are neatly set out, that you've got your lights that are working in your living room, make it homey versus hotel-like. With props, I mean, take that cup of coffee that you have, that you can make them, put it out with a little, with a magazine or a book or a flower on the coffee table. If you do offer that, I think it's very important what you're saying is that what one sees in pictures uh, is what what you expect. You know, so if you post a picture of a beautiful dining room table and there's a bottle of French champagne on that table, um, you should offer that bottle of French champagne. And if you don't want to, then you should not shoot the table with the bottle of French champagne. Home sharing is all about creating personal touches, putting down some rusks, having the Nespresso machine if that's what you can afford and want to do. If you go into a space and it's not as great as you want it to be, what is your, let's say, three quickest things, easiest things that you do to make it more attractive? Pull back the curtains, let the light flow in, declutter and style, use what you have. A flower goes a long way, a magazine goes a long way. Put a rusk with a cup of coffee and a magazine and that really does set the scene. Hide cords. If there's a lot of cords from your from your TV unit, uh, from your speaker system, try and hide the cords. Straighten wall art. I even hide remote. I try and put everything away that does not add value to the image. The fourth point you had was consider angles. I think this is a very important thing. Why should one consider that? With angles, I, I'm referring to the way you position yourself in your space. I always suggest walk through the space, take each corner of your room, look through your viewfinder. What view do you get from each corner of your room? For me personally, I think, and the easiest is, instead of shooting on a, on a corner, try and shoot straight on. That usually gives the most pleasing image. If you do want to attempt an angled shot instead, instead of straight on in a room, make sure that that angled shot is balanced. If you stand in front of an angle, make sure you're right in the middle of that angle as soon as you as soon as you angle it a bit more to the left or to the right your image seems to pull to the one side which does look a bit obscure one of the things that we often see is you know if you do straight on shots especially if it's like a bed and you've got this big wide thing that comes towards you if it's a straight on shot it almost looks like a runway um, and sometimes it's not even necessary to take that entire shot you know we often do straight on shots and we only do half the bed you know, as our stylist Marianne always says, you know, the one in, one side of the bed looks very much like the other side of the bed. So get that corner and show people what they can expect. Composition. What is composition? Composition is what you decide to include in your image. Well, if you have a living room, you've got an L-shaped couch, you've got a coffee table. On the one side, you've got a small side table. You've got a fireplace going. Decide what you are going to include in your image. That is composition. I always say less is more. Rather take two images to explain the, the space than trying to cram everything in one into one image. Find that point of focus. If you are in your bedroom, the automatic focus point would be the bed and the bedside tables. You can almost call it a point of interest. I mean, it's that one thing that you want to focus on and that needs to be the first thing you see in the image. But this is also something that we often see is that you don't cut off legs, for instance, of a bed, you know, or that you don't have a weird floating table to be aware of those kinds of things so that you get the best possible image with the right focus. You want to make sure your image is complete and what you do want to show off in your space is within your image. Know what makes your photo and what breaks your photo. So what is the rule of thirds? It's a technical term within photography and when you do a photography course it's one of the things you get taught first when you do composition. If you take your image or your viewfinder you divide that into nine blocks. Try and Put your focus point or your point of interest within one of those thirds. Research has proven that that's where the eyes are drawn to first. You're going to take an image of a flower. I'm just trying to keep it very, very simple. You've got your viewfinder. Instead of putting that flower with right slap bang in the middle of your viewfinder, 
put it a bit to the side, a third to a third of the of the screen. Oh, the one that I absolutely laugh about so often because it looks like a drunken sailor was behind the camera is the whole issue of lines. That was your sixth point in your ten point plan is that one should always consider lines and look at vertical lines and horizontal lines. When I speak about your your vertical lines, I mean taking your camera and making sure it's perfectly vertical. So it's not tilted forward and it's not tilted backwards. The same with horizontal lines. Make sure your camera is not leaning to one side because it does obscure an image and it, it makes an image feel uncomfortable. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's just a bizarre thing. If you look at you almost want to turn your head, you know, like this, you know, to get the right exactly. image. And that's what you exactly. were trying to avoid. At all exactly. Costs. The seventh one, don't shoot too wide. That's a difficult thing because, you know, especially in small spaces, you know, you are always tempted to use that setting where you've got the wide angle because you want to show everything at once. The danger with shooting too wide is that you create the illusion that a room or space is bigger than it actually is. Shooting too wide also disforms objects within your image. Point number eight is detailed images and a good overview. I mean, let's just quickly talk about the detailed images. Why is it important to take a picture of that beautiful vase of flowers or the beautiful scatter? Your overview images are to tell a potential guest how the space flows and to give an impression of what your space offers. Your detailed images are your images that that helps to create a feeling and tell the story of your space. If you have beautiful art in your home, if you are a, a musician and you have beautiful instruments in your home, showcase that because that tells the story of your home and it also attracts a certain type of booker. So, Stefani, I mean, if you've now done the shots, what is the first thing you look at when you start editing a shoot? The first thing I look at is my exposure. Is my image light enough? Is it too dark? Then I would up the exposure. You can up the contrast to make the definition of image or pronounce. Do you need to sharpen the image a bit? Do you need to tone down highlights where that windows, the light influx was just too much on the left or the right? Or in the corner of a room, there's a bit of a shadow spot. Just, just lift the shadow. So these are all little tricks that you can do within editing software. I use Lightroom and Photoshop. You can get a 30-day free trial if you want to give it a go. If you don't want to go with Lightroom or Photoshop, there are apps like Snapseed and Canva that you can use. Try to keep your colors true to the colors of the space. So what I like to do as well is I like to take an image with my phone next to the, my camera to try and remember the tone of the room. So try and keep the colors of the room true to what it was, and please do not over edit. If you do this as a shoot for yourself, and I mean, that's why we're speaking to you, I think the best advice actually is to try and avoid editing unless there's really big problems. But um, all in all, I think that's the most important thing, never over edit. The last point you make that day is to keep things authentic. What do you mean by that? What I mean with keep it authentic is you want to sell the space as it is. You don't want to overshow. You don't want to shoot too wide. You want to create the, the feeling of the space as it is. Uh, you want to manage the expectation of the guest. Yeah, I think that touches again on what you also said earlier about the Nespresso machine or the bottle of French champagne. And I like the way that you describe this, the story of the space. I mean, every space, whether you live there yourself or rent it out, has a story, you know, and, and stick to that. Stefani, so we've now spoken. It's 10 things that people can consider when they do their own spaces. I do want to ask you, because you're a professional photographer, if somebody wants to pay a professional photographer, you had a very nice checklist of things that people should consider. Maybe just run us through that. First of all, know what you are looking for. What is the style? Okay. Because that will help you in your search for the photographer that suits your style. Secondly, ask in your network. If you have got a list of photographers, View the portfolio. Take a look of the, at the images that they have taken. Take a look at the work. Are they a wedding photographer? Um, do they only do portrait photography? Also know what's in their toolkit. What type of camera do they use? What type of lens or lenses do they use? For me, very important, do they have a tripod? Also ask them how much time they would need. You need to also put time aside. How much time would they need to photograph your space? And what is the cost breakdown? The important thing for me is that some photographers only charge full day rates. Other photographers would say if it's a small space, this is only a half day shoot. 
So, I mean, ask that. And I think the important thing is that if you want to pay somebody for something, be sure of your own expectations. And I think that's important when you, you have your first contact with the photographer is that they communicate would they need a full day, would they need a half day. Does the rate cover the shoot including editing or is it excluding editing? What happens if that photographer goes over time? Do you have to pay extra per hour, per half hour? Do they ask travel costs? How many images will be delivered within that full day that they're going to shoot? I'm saying that because I know with an online, there's a criteria with how many images you need to upload per space. So make sure you know from your online platform, whether it's Airbnb or any other online platform, how many images you need to fulfill the content criteria of that online provider. So make sure they give you a full breakdown and communicating that clearly so you don't get caught up in any arguments afterwards. And then uh, just, I'm asking out of interest, so, I mean, is it standard practice for photographers? I mean, do you pay a deposit or do you pay afterwards? What usually, what should people expect? I do ask clients to, to pay a booking fee, which is 50%. It depends on the photographer. For me, it's 50% of the, of the total fee. The reason I ask that is because you ask me to reserve my time for that day or for that half day. It just gives commitment from both ends. And I have found in the past, if unfortunately, if I don't ask that booking fee or whether you call a deposit, the commitment does lack. And then it's a, a on the morning cancellation or the night before, and then I can't fill my time. I want to end our interview with what I call quick questions. Have you ever turned away from a shoot, gave it one look and thought, no, Al, I'm out of here? I'm quite a tenacious person, so I do see see things through. But yes, there have been times that I thought, oh, this is not going to work. I can't do this. But can I ask you, what is the worst thing that you've seen? It felt like I walked into a, into a bit of a circus. It was just a total incoherent, crazy, erratic decor. Your most simple trick if you have to improve a shot. I'm a sucker for a scatter cushion and a throw. What's the longest that you've struggled to get one space done? I had to return three times to a property. The first time it was just the readiness of the property. The second time the weather didn't allow. The third time was lucky. Three times to shoot a two-bedroom house. And the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen shooting homes for home sharing? I think it's the love that I found of a property. The love that, that homeowners have put into this space. We are showing readers your telephone number and contact details if they want to book you. Um, it's always a pleasure speaking to you and we will be in touch again. Thank you so much, Vickers.